This is Ted Wynn from The Athletic, and today we're going to look at how the Debo Samuel at running back experiment started. They actually started last year against the Rams, who the Niners are playing this week in an NFC Championship. Um, last year, Brandon Staley was the defensive coordinator for the Rams, and he played with a lot of two deep shells, a lot of light boxes, and Kyle Shanahan wanted to take advantage of that by coming out in 11 personnel and having Debo take handoffs and be the running back and event- essentially running their two back running concepts out of 11 personnel. And they did this by giving Samuel a bunch of tap passes. So when you look back at that game, he had zero carries, but he got a bunch of tap passes, which are basically handoffs in which the quarterback just kind of taps the ball towards um, the running back. It counts as a forward pass, but it's basically a handoff. So after that game, they really went away from the Debo package. They, they used it a little bit. They call it their Deadpool package. And then this year in week 10, when they played the Rams again, they brought that package out again, had a lot of success with Debo rushing the ball. The following game in week 11, um, Elijah Mitchell, their starting running back was hurt. So they kept on giving Debo the ball. And I think at some point they just realized we can't stop giving Debo the ball because he's so good with it. And we're going to keep going. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the film. We're going to look at what they did last year and how that package has evolved into what it is now. For context for the rest of this video, we really have to understand the Niners bread and butter concept, and that's 18-19 Zorro, which is basically an outside zone variant, but the main feature of Zorro is the double team on the edge player. They're going to have the tight end and fullback double team this edge player. The tight end is responsible for the outside shade of this edge player, while the fullback is responsible for the inside shade of this edge player, and they're going to double two secondary support in this on this play they end up blocking this linebacker but usually they're going to double team towards a strong safety or a cornerback and this role is interchangeable um, they have ross dwelly their second tight end play it but it could be kyle use it could be raheem mostert uh, this season they have jeff wilson doing it they have they even have wide receivers do it so it's a very interchangeable role but main thing is he has inside sh- inside shade of this edge player So, edge player goes inside. Kittle tries to reach him, but he goes inside of him. So, Kittle is going to let him go and release to the second level. This means that Dwelly has to block this edge player because he went inside. Dwelly's easily able to block him. Kittle gets to the second level and, um, you know, at least makes that linebacker fit on him. And this opens up a vertical cut lane for Matt Breida, former Niner. And Brita does the rest. So as we talked about before, the origins of Debo becoming a de facto running back came when the Niners played the Rams last year in the regular season. Brandon Staley likes to have a lot of light boxes. Um, he, he plays two deep safeties. And Shanahan wanted to take advantage of that by coming out in 11 personnel, which would make the box even lighter. As you can see here, you have two safeties. You have five guys on the line of scrimmage and only one linebacker versus this personnel and formation. And they're going to be able to run their 19 Zorro out of this formation because they still have the tight end and fullback or running back in this case. Mostert's going to serve as a fullback double team on the edge player. They have their double teams inside. And then Debo is going to be the, uh, the ball carrier. So instead of a handoff, you can see it's Garoppolo just give that, gives Debo that little tap pass. So you're going to see the double team with Mostert uh, with Kittle. Edge player goes outside, so Kittle takes him. And Mostert's going to look to climb up to the second level. He's looking for that corner, but he runs into the linebacker and kind of gets a piece of him anyways. Samuel does a good job of finding cutback lane. Runs to the pile of three defenders. It drags him for extra yardage. And that's just what makes Debo so different from these other receivers that might have some running back ability, but they just don't have that toughness and ability to move the pile that Debo does. So fast forward to this season. Um, the Niners faced the Rams in Week 10. They're reeling. They just lost to the Cardinals B team in Week 9. And they really need to win. And the Rams look good with Matthew Stafford under center. They're throwing the ball all over, all over the yard. Um, the Niners were, weren't were favorites in this game. But they came out. They brought the Debo package back. They started involving him in the run more. And they just 
looked really physical against the Rams and were able to move the ball consistently on the ground and the Debo and or Deadpool package was a big part of that. So here, the Niners start out empty. They motion Samuel into the backfield. You can see they have that same 5-1 front as that clip from the uh, from last season. Two deep safeties. Jeff Wilson, the running back, is lined up here. Again, he's going to take the uh, role of the fullback here. The Niners are going to put him in motion. So you have the tight end responsible for the outside shoulder of the edge player. Wilson responsible for the inside shoulder. Again, they're double teaming to secondary support. This time, instead of giving him that tap pass, they're going to turn around, hand him off the ball. Um, the, the double team on the, the edge gets messed up a little bit here, but they at least move the edge player out. They don't block the secondary support player. But check out Trent Williams. Just This guy, this defensive tackle is outside shade of Trent Williams. This block is a very difficult block to make. He reaches him pancakes him, creates a lane. It doesn't matter that the, um, the outside double team doesn't get to the secondary um, support player because there's just so much space for Debo to work. And they get a nice gain out of it. And throughout the game, they were just running these type of concepts or complementary concepts from it. So in week 18, the Rams really changed their defensive philosophy. They weren't going to come out in those light boxes. They weren't going to play two deep safeties and just get ran all over by the Niners. Uh, so... They played more single high safety. They brought it. They brought the safety down in a box to play to run a little bit more. So here you can see the Niners are out in an empty formation like they were in the previous clip. They motion Debo into the backfield. The Rams have Fuller come into the box. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the box against this formation. Jeff Wilson's lined up at that H back spot again, and he's going to double team. Uh, this edge player to the cornerback Jennings is going to block the strong safety and they're going to make this play look exactly like 18 Zorro like they've been running it before Garoppolo turns around hands off the ball to Debo you can see Jennings uh, fake like he's going to block this strong safety and when he cracks down that strong safety the corner has to crack replace he has to replace that safety in a run fit so he's screaming down hill right now Jennings gets behind him and Debo sets up for a pass he's on a run he has to throw a jump pass it is a really good ball for having pressure and getting hit and having that jump makes the pass to Jennings for a huge touchdown in this game in the third quarter so Shanahan has done a nice job of adding to this dead pull package as uh, the season has progressed. They even they run some pass concepts with uh, Debo running routes from the backfield. They don't do it too often, but it's pretty effective when they do. Um, but sometimes they just want to give Debo the ball because he's their toughest runner. Elijah Mitchell's been really good this um, this season, but I think Debo is just a tougher runner. So here they motion Debo in the backfield, and then they motion use check out, and they're just going to run their. Um, their best run, one of their favorite run contests from Shotgun, and that's it's called Pop in their uh, terminology, uh, but it's actually a long trap, and we'll talk about why it's called a long trap. Uh, so with the long trap, you're gonna trap this defensive end outside. Usually in a trap, you you trap a defensive tackle, but here you, they're gonna have this guard pull, Lakin Tomlinson, and block this um, outside linebacker. The key block here is gonna be from the right tackle on Smith. Smith is lined up outside shoulder of him so it's a very tough block to make um, but it's a key block because that's the one that creates the alley right in between here. And Jennings I think he is supposed to block this safety in the alley originally uh, but you'll see what happened post snaps there's some confusion here but he ends up blocking nobody. And this is third and seven um, with the game on the line, they need to get in the field goal range. They don't want to pass the ball in these conditions. So this is a, it's a gotta have it play. And they decide they're going to give the ball to Samuel, their best um, offensive player. So first, we're going to pay attention to this uh, key block here. Right tackle has to be able to block Smith. But... He goes too far inside. Smith is able to keep his helmet outside and defend his run that's supposed to go right in this alley here. Second thing to pay attention to is Jennings. Jennings has his eyes on this deep safety. 
But when he sees a safety back up and he understands that he's no longer part of the run fit, then he tries to block Alexander 23, but then he overshoots it and he's just not able to block him. So Debo has to ward off Smith first. Smith has his outside arm free and he tries to arm tackle him. Debo says, hell no, wards his arm away. He sees Alexander unblocked. Alexander doesn't look like he, ha he wants to have anything to do with that tackle. He just cuts up inside, runs through contact, great contact balance. There are three defenders there, runs through them, and gets the necessary yardage to get the first down to seal the game for the Niners. Um, so against the Rams, the team that basically um, was responsible for creating this Debo package or responsible for the Niners creating this Debo package, um, I think they're going to take a similar approach to Week 18 where they're going to put eight in a box. They're going to play the 6-1, 6-2 defensive, uh, defensive fronts to try to stop the Niners' run game. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Shanahan schemes up as part of his Debo package against those heavier boxes, whether it's going to be some play-action concepts or maybe more double passes or reverses, whatever it is. Um, it, it's going to be a fun matchup, and um, we'll see if Garoppolo is able to beat these guys in the air because I really don't think that the Rams are going to allow the Niners to just run all over them like they have in the past six games. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I know I've done a lot of Raider content so far, but I'm going to start branching out and look at more teams around the NFL. And during draft season, we'll be looking at a ton of prospects. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time.